For 113 years, one brand has defined what it takes to be an outdoorsman, field and stream. Many people consider themselves outdoorsmen. To call yourself a total outdoorsman, you need to master a wide range of disciplines. On the water, in the woods, come rain or shine. Only a select few can make such a claim, and only one can say, I am the best. Hey, go, 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 go. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. For the past nine months, hundreds of the country's top anglers and hunters have been vying for a chance at glory and $25,000. 16 competitors, seven challenges, one champion. The 2008 Field and Stream Total Outdoorsman Challenge now. The 2008 Field and Stream Total Outdoorsman Challenge presented by Mobile One. Welcome back to the 2008 Field and Stream Total Outdoorsman Challenge. Yeah! I'm Courtney Hansen, along with Eddie Nickens, editor at large and resident total outdoorsman for Field and Stream. Eddie, this is it, the last day of the competition. What a crazy ride this has been. Sure has, Courtney. We've had upsets, we've had downfalls, but it's still a neck and neck race to crown the Field and Stream total outdoorsman. We've had five unbelievable events so far, beginning two days ago with a shotgun event at Seven Mule Pass. In a brutal head-to-head -head matchup, Peter Mosby defeated two-time champion Paul Thompson by posting a near-perfect score of 38. The competitors had to switch gears fast for the rifle event, where Scott Marson's dominating score of 79 was nine full points ahead of the second-place finisher, Daniel Lee Martin, and this put Scott in first place overall. After two events, Paul Thompson's lackluster score has nearly dashed his hopes for three-peating this year. Yesterday morning dawned the third event, fly fishing, where fly fishing guide Matt Stadina schooled the field, catching three rainbows over 20 inches. But Peter was right behind him, keeping a tight grip on first place overall. I got the one All I right, wanted. man, good job, you. awesome fish. Swapping their fishing rods for bows, the competitors quickly moved to the archery event. Brian Kramer was the early leader, but James Herod, shooting two 10-point high-risk targets, snatched the lead and took first place. Good shooting, bud. I think you just put the squeeze on everybody. Paul Thompson's third place finish puts him in comeback country as he climbed from fifth to second in the overall standings. And we closed yesterday with bass fishing. In an event that takes no prisoners, the field quickly split into the anglers who were catching and those who were just casting. I know the fish are in there. Tom Cooprider showed his bass catching skill with nearly 70 inches of measured fish. The overall leader, Peter Mosby, came in a painful eighth place, while Paul Thompson finished second. That gave the two-time returning champion the overall lead for the first time. Peter Mosby is in a close second, and Scott Marson is in third. These guys and the rest of the competitors will be giving it everything they've got for our final two events today, ATV and the Endurance Challenge. The outcome of these events will decide the winner of the Total Outdoorsman Challenge and the $25,000 grand prize. All right, well that is where everybody stands. Now, as you can see, the rain has started again. Eddie and I are gonna head over to the ATV course now. Yesterday, I had a chance to try it out and it was a blast. The object of the ATV challenge is to navigate the course without hitting any cones. There are 50 cones on the way there and 50 cones on the way back. For each one you hit, you lose a point. You also have to do the challenge in five minutes. For each second over five minutes, you lose another point. <laughs> yeah. All right, that course is a lot harder than it looks. I can't wait to see how the competitors do. Coming up next, the ATV Challenge. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. Hi. I'm NASCAR driver Ryan Newman. With Mobile One as my associate sponsor, I drive the number 12 car in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. As a brand long associated with the sports enthusiast, Mobile One, the official motor oil of NASCAR, is proud to team with Field & Stream to sponsor this year's Total Outdoorsman Challenge. As you can see, 
When I'm not at the track, I love to spend my free time outdoors, hitting legs for anything that'll bite. Thanks for watching the Field and Stream Total Outdoorsman Challenge. For Mobile One Racing, I'm Ryan Newman. Until next time. This portion of the 2008 Total Outdoorsman Challenge is presented by Mobile One. Welcome back. We're here in beautiful Dogwood Canyon, Missouri, and about to begin our second to last event of the competition, my personal favorite, the ATV Challenge. Already on the course are Al Roberts and Scott Marson. Al has made great time so far, but he sacrificed a bit of control on this course. He plowed over 15 cones inside the halfway mark. On the other hand, Scott Marson has only hit seven cones, but this could change as he approaches this killer downhill section. Let's go to Courtney, as it looks like another competitor has just started the course. Here comes Paul Thompson. He is currently in the lead overall, and he's a two-time reigning total outdoorsman champion. Let's see if he can make it a three-peat. Oh, tapped one there. He's taking his time. Some of the riders tackle this course aggressively, and others are, are much calmer and more strategic about it, and it looks like that's what Paul's doing. He is doing great out here. All right, let's see how things are doing over on Eddie's end. Thanks, Courtney. I've got Al Roberts here, and he's been going so fast that judges are having a tough time keeping up. This is a very intense competitor. He told me that since 1997, he and his family haven't eaten any meat that he didn't kill. But this is the part of the course that's been eating some competitors alive. Let's see how Al Roberts does. Look at the way he's moving his body. He's really concerned about his center of gravity. And as you could tell, he really needed to be. He just crushed one cone and he's jammed up. He's jammed up in this gully. This is Peter Mosby. He's a two-time total outdoorsman competitor. And whoa, he just hit a cone. Oop, he hit one there too. He's currently in second place overall, but if he continues like this, this event may really hurt him. This is a man who knows ATVs. He's won twice in other Total Outdoorsman challenges. Whoa, Scott Marson lost elevation on his back left tire. He's really given this some thought. Al is currently in fifth place, so depending how he did in this challenge, it could really affect his point standing. And Al is through the course. This is Colorado Mountain Man Peter Mosby. He was a stunt double on Walker, Texas Ranger, and Mosby is having a super, super run. Earlier in the week, we talked strategy with Peter. I would say anybody out here in this field could win it. It's just having that little bit of luck and getting that talent all at the same time, having it all come together. It's just like when you're a kid and you're competing against your brothers, and I love it. So now what I have to do is I got to step up, keep focus, shoot my game, and I'm going to win this. Here comes Peter Mosby rounding out the course. He's attacking it aggressively, standing up. Here he comes on the really challenging stretch. Oh, wow. He avoided him there. And woo, there goes Peter through the cones. OK, here comes Paul Thompson. He is currently first place overall. This is exciting, because there could be an upset. Heading through the final cones. And he missed them both. All right. Paul Thompson set the bar extremely high for the rest of the field, putting up a score of 92. What was the most difficult part of the course? There was a steep bank in there that you couldn't help but to slide into a cone because it just got so wet that you just spun. Well, thanks, Paul. Good luck with the last event. Thanks, Courtney. More Total Outdoorsman Challenge right after this break. The Yamaha 550 is available with electric power steering. Now, not only is Yamaha one of the few manufacturers to offer this technology, but they were the first company to introduce it a few years back. Where power steering really comes in handy is in tight spaces or on rough, uneven terrain. The ease of operation will keep you out of trouble and make for a much safer, more enjoyable riding experience.